Hey guys, welcome to this episode on TFB TV. Today we're going to be talking about an extremely rare derivative of the Egyptian Rashid rifle called Baghdad. Um, we'll get into why it's pretty rare, but let's shoot it first. Now this is an SKS stripper clip, and the bolt hold open doesn't work on this. So, um, in Iraq this is known as a Siminov, a, an Iraqi Siminov, and the stripper clip... All right. Well, tell us um, about the Baghdad. Wow, so this is something we're still trying to figure out. So we know of this rifle called the Baghdad. Um, we've only seen it exist in Iraq. Um, it is the same pattern as the Egyptian Rashid. In fact, in the, everything is in the same location except instead of saying Rashid, it says Baghdad, it says 762, and instead of uh, made in UAR, it says made in um, Baghdad in English, and then it says Saniya Baghdad, which is made in Baghdad in Arabic. The years of production that we've seen on them, and we've only seen about five, um, there's one in the United States that we know of, and it was sold on Gunbroker um, to someone on there. Of the five or so that we've seen in Iraq, it begs this question of, you know, what is the Baghdad rifle? And but the years of production are all in the 1970s. 1975 is one, I think 1973 is another. But 1970s, this is after, you know, the 1960s, this is after 67 war, this is after the Yom Kippur war, this is, you know, this is well in there. And the question that I want to know is two questions. One, we're pretty certain that the Baghdad rifle, looking at the machining marks and stuff, we're pretty certain the Baghdad rifle was made um, on the same machines that made the Rashid. Now, th the next question is, were those machines in Iraq when they made them, or were they in Egypt when they made them? And that's a big difference that we want to find out. I wonder if, I was thinking about that, we had this discussion earlier, I wonder if the receivers were made in, a, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And since they weren't finished guns, they were sent to Iraq and finished, and when they were finished, they were engraved. Possibly, but they would have had to be engraved with the same engraving marks over here, because it's the same location. It's the same font, same, you know, tooling to mark them as well. Yeah, what, what, to me what gives it away is the chatter, the machine chatter on the side of the receiver. I mean, it's, it's too similar for it not to be the same equipment. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of Iraqi small arms production, it's actually the same model as the Egyptian. You have this whole line of Iraqi tabuks and Tark uh, handguns. And, but the problem is, you think of, you know, what was that, what did the Iraqi use in Iran-Iraq war, in Gulf war, in um, Operation Iraqi Freedom in the beginning? Um, and the, the textbook answer is that, oh, well, Saddam would have used the Tabuk rifle. It's actually incorrect. The majority of rifles used by the Iraqi army at the time of any of these wars are not Iraqi. They're not Tabuks. They're Hungarian. They're Russian. They're Chinese. They're all sorts of stuff. They're Polish. Um, and we see this in archival material of all uh, photographs and videos of, of the fighting. And we also see this at the Marine Corps Museum in Virginia, which the majority of the, has one of the biggest uh, foreign AK collections in the U.S. It's publicly accessible. Um, the majority of the um, Iraqi bringbacks from the Gulf War, I mean, these are actual Marine Corps captured stuff that was bringing back to the U.S., the majority of it is not at the book. There's only about five to books in that collection, and the rest of it is all this other Chinese, Hungarian, Polish stuff. So, with that being said, I think it fits the same model as these were political guns. They were made for, you know, the, the you know, in this, in the Egyptian case, uh, Nasser, and then in the Iraqi case, Saddam, is like you had these big guys who, you know, very dictatorial and authoritarian, and they said, you know, we want to have, you know, an Iraqi or an Egyptian small arms production capacity. We want to be making all our own defense stuff. And the industrial side of it is, all right, yeah, give the boss, you know, something that he can, you know, sprout, sprout out. And then, as you pointed out here, something, I don't know how we miss this. Well, I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the crazy thing here is that, I just noticed this on, on your example, the Egyptian, this Egyptian Rashid with a 1966 production year has an Iraqi army crest on it. So that just throws a wrench into it further. This is one decade before we see any Iraqi Baghdad guns of those years. I, 
I'm no expert on that, but I, just looking at the finish, obviously this is an original part. They're all finished. All the finish wear is the same. So, another point here is that you know what's what is the possibility that just this piece comes from a Baghdad rifle and not you know the whole thing. So I mean. So you're thinking maybe it was a rebuild overseas? I don't know. I have no. I have no idea. Um, Either way, we're still trying to figure out what the Baghdad rifle is. My, my, some, my hypothesis at this point that I cannot prove or disprove is that it was never made in Iraq, but it was sold to Iraq. Um, but that's left to be decided. Or do you, the other option is the Egyptians sold the equipment to the Iraqis. Yeah, and it was but made there. And why aren't there more? And that's the thing is I, and we know about Tabuk production being the beginning of Tabuk production was Yugoslavian stuff made in Yugoslavia for Saddam. And then later on, Saddam took on production and was making the stuff there. Um, so either, well, the point I'm trying to say here is either small arms, inter, small arms production in Iraq began with the Tabuk or it began with the Baghdad. And I don't know. Uh, we, we, just can't, we just don't know at this point. So looking into the Baghdad rifle a little bit after Scott's, we chanced upon a couple more things on the internet realizing that there's actually a bunch of Rashid rifles in the United States that have this little um, Iraqi army uh, crest on the safety block. Um, we'll throw the link up for the gun boards post, but it's interesting to see that there's a bunch of other ones out there and that Scott's rifle isn't just the only Egyptian Rashid with an Iraqi Baghdad uh, rear, sight block, or rear, rear safety block on the back of it. And another big thing I want to mention contextually that's something that we didn't realize when we were at Scott's was looking at the foreign relations between Egypt and Iraq. Well, first of all, Egyptians have had a long history of working in Iraq. But anyways, foreign relations between the two countries, Egypt and Iraq, were very close economically and diplomatically um, and militarily. I mean, remember in 1973, there's an entire Iraqi division that took part in the Yom Kippur slash October War. Um, but we spade up to 1977, and there's a huge fallout between Iraq, which hadn't yet come under Saddam at that time, and Egypt due to Egypt's signature of a ceasefire deal with Israel. Iraq and Egypt had a big falling out over this. Um, now, putting this in the context of the Baghdad rifle, the earliest Baghdad rifle we've seen has a date of 69, and the latest has a date of 75 or so. Um, so this might fit along that timeline of the Baghdad rifle's production before that fallout in 77. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and we appreciate the viewership. And if you could like and subscribe, that'd be great. And you need to check out Machine Gun Dad's channel all right now. How can everybody support you? They can't support me. I'm, I'm me-funded, <laughs> and I've been demonetized thanks to YouTube's anti-gun policies. Oh, my gosh. Well, they can still subscribe, and you can see that. That works for me. <laughs> all right.